All right, Big Mac, today is Thursday. It is April 4th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, today, my guest in studio, Barstool's newest employee. Three three weeks. I mean, I would say I'm a, in a totally different uh, role than I was for the past five years. Yeah, different echelon. You kind of had the same thing as we did where you were with the company for a while until you went full time. So it's Tate. Uh, listen, uh, you went from the classroom to the blogger's den. And uh, it's kind of been what I'd imagine a wild ride the past couple of months for you. So welcome in. I'm glad to have you on. Thanks. I'm um, excited for this. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, so essentially, uh, your your origin story started in what year? Um, it would have been 2018. I'm coming up on six year six years of writing for Barstool here in August. Huh? Dude, that's so much longer than I think anyone would have ever anticipated. I know. I was on. I was a part-time cartoon faced blogger for five and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then I've been a full-time employee for three weeks, but yeah, my six week mark or my six month mark will be in August. Okay. And, and listen, a lot of people too, you've, you've done a lot of these, you've done the whole gauntlet of shows, the whole car wash. So we're going to get into some of the same stuff, but we're going to hopefully get into some new stuff too. But, uh, you obviously started the second barstool idol, right? Yeah. So what happened was I was, just out of college, uh, living with my grandma at the time. And so I would come home, I wouldn't have anything to do. And that's when I really fell in love with Barstool. Um, listening to pardon my take, reading the blogs, all that stuff, watching the rundown. And then, uh, they did the first Barstool Idol. And I don't know if you remember the first Barstool Idol, but it was kind of like a, a mishmash of characters. Um, Francis was really good. Yeah, I remember Francis. I remember uh, my guy, Mr. Portnoy, being a judge at one point, and that's kind of about all I remember. Kind of all like just thrown together and not like the most like um, organized type thing. Yeah. And so I was watching it and I was like, Jesus, aside from Francis, who obviously is very talented, I was like, if, if this ever comes back, I'm going to apply. Mm -hmm. um, so then it came back and you had to make a audition tape. So they, they basically took the top... I think it was the top 30 tapes. And then all of us had to go to New York and do like a two minute skit in front of, it was KFC, Dan, Dave, and then Francis was involved too. And you had to get two out of three yeses to make it to the final 10. So I did that. I made my audition tape from the classroom. Um, and I was basically like, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to move to Barstool. Got in the top 30, drove to New York on the weekend made it in the top 10 and then had to miss the first week of school in 2018 to be on Barstool Idol. That's not easy though, right? Like missing school as a teacher from what I understand is like horrible because like there's just, I mean, some places I'm sure are good with subs, but for a lot of reasons, like it's like, Hey, you're, you got to be there every day. Yeah, no, it, uh, you're, you're exactly right with that. And it's, some people are going to say, I'm like complaining, crying, whatever, because teachers do get a lot of time off. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. get spring break, we get the whole summer off, we get winter break, we get all these holidays, we get conference days, all that. But on the days where you're supposed to be there, you have to be there. You're better. You better be there. Yeah. So, so, cause one, it sucks to get a sub, like to leave sub plans is worse than just doing it yourself. Um, how, so how did your school do it? Like you're not in charge of finding your own sub, are you? No, but you have to leave your entire schedule, what they're going to do, make all the copies, make all the materials, tell them what to do. Kids are going to misbehave. Then you got to deal with that when they come back. What if the computer doesn't work, whatever. So it, it's a, it's a hassle. Um, plus you only get three personal days a year. So whereas we get all this time off, if, if you were, you know, getting married, having a bachelor party in, I don't know, September, Chances are I probably wasn't going to be able to make it because aside from the days you get scheduled off, you have to work on the days where you have to work. So I ended up for that week, met with my principal and took a week of unpaid vacation, um, which again, I'm, I'm crying, but when you only work 180 days out of the year, you take your salary and divide it by 180, which is way different than dividing it by 260. Yeah. Um, so missing five days ended up being like a couple thousand dollars that I didn't get paid to mm -hmm. go to Barcelona. Damn. So big, big sacrifice, but in your mind, it was worth it at the time. Um, yeah, I don't know how I didn't know this, but when I got there, I found out that the winner of Barstool Idol got a six month contract for $50,000 in New York city. Um, 
So really cool. People would literally chop their arm off to be able to do that for this company. So really cool. But I was a teacher. I was a coach. I really liked my situation and I was really excited about working for Barstool. I just wasn't ready to leave what I had. And then to factor in like, dude, what if six months from now you get non-renewed and then you're screwed in both ends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, just, it was an interesting dynamic. And and in Ohio, was it a public school? Yeah, public school. So, so I assume it's like public record. So okay. you're like, what, in like the 70s or the 80s or something? At the time, it was like my second year. I mean, I made 33,000 my first year teaching. Okay. And then I moved up to 34, took a new job down in Columbus, and I uh, my, got my master's. I have like my master's. I have another degree. I've got th- uh, 70 extra credit hours all to get you to like 70. Okay. So not, I wasn't like I was rich, but also the lifestyle of a teacher isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. And not only would it have been a pay cut, it would have been going to like the most expensive city in the fucking country. Mm-hmm. And uh, not even to mention like it's a six months, like you said. Yeah. Like, like the guy who won it, Mantis won it. And I know there's a whole bunch of different things. Mantis isn't here anymore. Um, mm-hmm. what if, what if you win? Cause what ended up happening throughout the week was I had to start doing, I think I started off hot. I, I was doing well, some blogging, some good skits, everything. Then it turned into like, I remember the challenge that really threw me was they wanted us to do the nine, nine, nine beers challenge, hot dogs with white Sox Dave. And I was like, guys, I, I'm sorry to be lame, but I can't drink on camera. Like I've got my students, my parents, my principals, my teachers all watching me. Then so we, they were all aware. This wasn't like a, hey, principal, I keep this on the low. It it was, there were some people that knew. I definitely had to meet with the principal. I explained it to her as American Idol for a, uh, for a sports media company. Um, but then it turns into like, I had to do uh, stand-up comedy. And that's really hard to do when it's like, you're trying to balance keeping this job, maybe getting this job. What if I lose this, but can't come back to this because I did something stupid? So yeah. it was an interesting week. Yeah. No, I, I could see that. So when the 999 challenge comes, you back out because you don't want to uh, drink on camera for- Which sounds lame, but like, dude, I don't know. They make these like rules for teachers, like no posting anything with a drink. Yeah. Or, like you'll be fired. So. No, I listen, I think people will understand. I don't think it, I, I mean, I get it. I, I think- um, you, you just get to a point where you just had to make a business decision. That's kind of what you did. But then how did it get to the point where it's like, hey, I'm, did you back out of the contest entirely after that or what? So I remember the first two days, I would say I was definitely winning after the first couple of days. And then we had to do, we had to make a video and then we had to go do stand up comedy that night. And it's one thing, like I'm impressed with people that can make people laugh without doing anything inappropriate. No bad words, no cussing, anything. Um, I struggled with that with the video. I knew the video wasn't going to go my way. And then doing stand-up comedy with your boss watching you is really hard. So I kind of mailed it in for that. And the judges, I think, were Big Cat, Dave, and Francis doing stand-up comedy. And basically Dave was like, look, dude, you were my favorite after the first couple days. Today was a rough day for you. And I just said, yeah, man, I mean, I've, I've hit a wall because – more people are watching me back home than I thought. My school that I coach basketball that's watching me. These challenges are becoming more bar stool than just like yeah. whatever. Um, and and he said, okay, well, you know, if and I, I don't think I was gonna get sent home that night. He's like, well, maybe we should just make you like a like a, a blogger at home. Would you be interested in teaching, coaching, and blogging part time? And I was like, yes. So by when almost when, like the perfect scenario. Best thing you. that could ever yeah. happen to me. Um and actually what's funny is like, I'm, I'm like, a, I write down my goals and everything kind of lame, but there was a time, um, a year before where I was like the perfect life for me would be teach coach right for barstool. Mm-hmm. And it got that by Wednesday, the contest like ended on Friday, but by Wednesday I was already set up with an HQ account blogging back in Ohio. Yeah. And then, so there you go. So that's like 2019. Yeah. That was t- August of 2018. 2018 to, uh, basically the end of 2013. After or 2023, the, sorry. Yeah, after the first year, K. Marco's editor, obviously Dave, in charge, reached both reached out to me and said, "You're doing a good job. Would you like to go full time?" And I was like, uh, "Yes, I would." Um, we agreed on a salary. I was pretty sure I was going to move to New York, um, and then I got cold feet. Our basketball team was really good, and 
I just had weird feelings about going to college for something, spending my whole life focusing on something and then just giving it up, especially when I thought our basketball team was about to be really good. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay part-time. Now, thankfully we were 21 and two that year and I got state coach of the year. So it was like, it was good for my career in that aspect, but then no, I did not get another offer to go full-time until January of 2024. So you just said thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to keep being part-time. Yeah. Uh, um, Dave's not the best uh, response guy. Yeah. So I when know. so I, there was a time where if he just would have, like I said, like, yes, I agree on that salary. Where do you want me? Um, send over a contract. If I would have responded again, I think it could have continued and he would have got it done, but he never responded to me and I got cold feet. So I never reached back out. And it just kind of died. Down. Died, yeah. That's it. All right. So then in, in your head- you're kind of like, all right, like this is going to be a part-time thing. I'm just going to keep teaching these kids, coaching these kids, mm -hmm. and this is going to be my life. Like you said, that goal sheet filled yep. out, and th and that was it. I loved it. Then what what changes la this these past couple months? Here's what changed, and I'm not trying to say it was anyone's fault. When Dave bought back the company, I think everyone started to get more involved again. Like everyone was like. The pen money's not here, whatever. Like we need to lock in. Um, it was my last day of school, last school year. I'm sitting at the staff party and I get an email. Now, mind you, I don't have a barstool email. Six years, never was on an email list. Um, part of my gripe, whatever. Um, but I get an email from Gaz and he was in the, in the right to email me this. But he was just like, dude, you're not writing very much. Like what's going on? Um, we can't pay you if you don't work. And he's right. I mean, there were times after two years where I thought I was doing really well and I was writing like 60 blogs a month. And then we would change editors and I wouldn't even hear from them or I wouldn't, or I'd reach out and say, can I get on the email list? And no one would answer me. And so then I would duck down and I wouldn't hear from anyone, but then the, the Indians would make the playoffs and I would do 60 in a month. And I would, yeah. so you never heard like you're doing well, you're doing poorly. And honestly it was summer and the Browns weren't playing and the Buckeyes weren't playing. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to do a couple blogs a month. And I don't even know if they know I work here anymore. So Gaz was in the right for reaching out. And I responded, I said, listen, dude, like, you're correct. I'm not working as hard as I should. What can I do to still work here? Like, I don't want this to be a you're fired moment. I want this to be a kick in the ass. Was it itching that way? Or do you think he was like actually giving you a lifeline? Like, hey, like you got to figure this out or this ain't going to work. I was nervous. I sent it to my group chat first and said like, dude, how do I respond to this? And they were all like, dude, you're not fired. Dude, you're not fired. Like, just be like, okay, I'll, I'll start working hard. But I didn't know how it would work. Like, I didn't know if that meant you're done. So I responded. I said, whatever you want me to do. Like, do you, like, do you want me to pay money back? I'll pay money back. I will be back to being the Tate I was in the first couple of years. I'm actually glad you reached out because I was afraid no one knew that I was just blogging. Yeah. Um, and so you, you got to a point where your work, you kind of felt like, all right, well, is this even... Dude, if you're the number one blogger on that thing that like Hubs and Nate sent out at the end of the week, or you're not on it, didn't matter to me. I got paid the same. I didn't have any incentives. I didn't have any goals. Yeah. It got like, like I'm not gonna part time thing. Yeah, like so you're, you, it, and like you're you're on stipend at that point, right? What's it like five yeah. five hundred thousand a month or something? It, it like was, that. and and to be honest, um, I wasn't getting paid very much. Like I was, I was, it was. Did someone click a button at the end of the month? So I would get paid one month. And then I wouldn't get paid for three months. And then I get paid for all three at one time. So everything was just so unorganized where I was like, all right, if we're going to kick it into gear, guys. So I, I gave, I didn't get paid for that month. Fine. I said, I want an email. I said, I want to be on payroll. Like, dude, I got to get paid every month. I can't, how can you ask me to, to work and get these blogs and then not get paid for three months mm -hmm. um which is fair he was he was on the same page he's like that's embarrassing that'll that'll get fixed so i said how like is there a number you want me to blog and he said he talked to the editors and they came up with the number of 35 did you have a number was everyone getting like that there was definitely a email that went out to people who were given number of blogs per month for okay. sure that wasn't a a you thing. But I'm not saying it was a me yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I would love to know what the numbers were. For everyone else. Because 35 
Football season, fine. Browns, fine. 35 was a lot in the middle of July when I'm getting paid 500 bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did it because, so I did it that June. And then, and I was very thankful that he gave me that. I was like, yep, I'll get it done. July comes around and I don't know, you, Barcelona's kind of like off for a small part of July, right? Like that they get a little vacation and. Uh, Yes. There's, there's the one, the couple weeks we have off is there's like a little week and a half during Christmas break. And then there's like a week during 4th of July week. Yes. Okay. So. I should have blogged more. That's a fact. But in July, I think I did like 16. And it seems like a lot of people were, it was July. Like Dave might be on vacation. People might be blogging less. There's not much going on except for baseball. I did 16. I heard from him on July 31st or August 1st. Like, dude, we said 35. Like you didn't do 35. Hey, point taken. You will not ever email me again. About blog. About blog numbers. I will get my 35. Uh August, September, October. November, December, January, 35 each. And I'm looking at the, at the like output numbers that are on our back end. And I'm not upset, but I'm wondering what other people's numbers are. And if I do this, I know that I can't say anything now because six months ago I wasn't working very hard. But if I keep this up for a year, Am I in line to ask for a little more money each month or cause I can't do 35. I'm like blogging on my hotspot on my phone because of school blocks, bar stool. Like I'm working really hard to get yeah. it done. Uh. Um, so I'm wondering what's going on and I'm still, you know, just consuming bar stool. And this is you past tense. I want to f- phrase that. This is not you speaking now. Not at I all. I want to say, I'm not I, mad at it. I don't any- want people to get misconstrued with that. Cause then someone will take that out of context and be like, Oh, Tate's planning to ask for a raise next year. And I want to, I don't want to. Thank you for that saying that. Long. Not even a little bit. I know how this works. Thank you. Nice. And, and also I do want to say one, I, Gaz did not do anything wrong. Gaz was doing his job. I don't think all the information was there from all sides. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so end of January happens and I'm watching Barstool Radio because Barstool Radio comes back. And this is in the heat of my basketball season, the heat of me finding things to write about to hit my 35. And I hear, you know, Kelly said she stays at home on Fridays to blog. Fine. I don't know her at all. I have no problem with her. I just wanted to check for myself because I'm like, damn, dude, what a life that would be. Some of these people get to go to the Super Bowl, get to go to Final Four, get to work from home and blog. Could you imagine if I got to work from home and blog? So I checked on the back end. Probably didn't need to do it, but ended up well for me. Um, I think it had been like nine Fridays in a row where she hadn't blogged. Mm-hmm. So that that was unfortunate, and I didn't mean it to be like an attack at Kelly. It was more my frustration of, Dude, I think I'm being held accountable here for not that much money. Mm -hmm. I would like to know if other people are being held accountable. So that was truly it. There was no uh, vendetta against Kelly. She was just kind of strapping on the side. I feel bad. That kind of happened because you were like, hey, if they're going to be watching me, they should be watching everyone. Correct. Um, And so I wrote the blog and I stand by that the, the blog, it was like titled, I'm sick and tired of lazy Barstool employees. And I really... I really toyed with leaving it at that or putting colon Kelly Keeks. Because again, I don't know her at all. Never met her once. Didn't think it was going to, to be honest, I think her reaction made it worse for her than it was. Like I said, I called her lazy. Um, And my evidence was she says she blogs on Fridays. She doesn't publish blogs on Fridays. Um, From there, I had a little time on my hands. So I kind of knew like she was going to respond. She doesn't know anything about me. She, the best she could say about me is like, who the fuck is this guy? I knew she was going to say that. So I had already kind of been ready for like, all right, if, if one drops, I got, an, I, I got a couple other things ready to go. Um, and I love a good blog where I've been in a couple, like I was in with one with Rico. I was, yeah. I was going to say like you and I have kind of been in contact and DMing for a couple of years now because of when I did the show with Dave, you got into it with Rico, you got into it with Marty. There were, you had some like little beefs and I'd be like, Hey, going to need you on the show this yeah. week and whatnot. And we, uh, we've always been cordial and stuff. So. And the, and the reason if I know it seems like I like sit in the back and like just fire at people, 
I've never done it until the Kelly thing without being mentioned. Like the uh -huh. Rico thing was, he was on the streams calling me, getting all the heavy hitters aligned. Dude, Rico, I was making $500 a month. Mm -hmm. um, Marty said like, who's, and I have no problem with those guys. I actually met them at the streams and liked them a lot. Yeah, good guys. Um, for sure. And then this one, I will say that I came out of the clouds at someone and it was from my frustration of my situation, not anything she said about me, obviously. Yeah. Um, but but my thing was this. From there, I was like in the mix and I was fully prepared to go on Barstool Radio on Monday. And I was like, man, maybe this will get me in the mix a little bit. Go back and forth. Professional wrestling. Like I didn't – I wasn't actually mad at Kelly. And I was going to say that. Like I'm not like mad at Kelly. I'm not – I was upset with my own situation. Well, what happened from there was Nate read the blog on the back end, didn't publish it, the original one. Like I knew it was going to be big, didn't publish it, did his Nate at noon and talked about it. And I thought used some of my material. And I was like, dude, this sucks. Like I did this research. I did this work. Now you're talking about it. And then he just threw in like a, and I see Ohio State has a blog on the back end and he should be thankful for every dollar he has from this company. And that just fueled the fire of like, dude, how much are you guys making to do this many blogs? And I get they do other things, but like, I just thought my situation sucked. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm ready to go on Barcelona Radio and they just didn't talk about it at all, mm -hmm. which was crazy. Um, I was watching the whole thing, had a sub, ready to go. Um, they didn't talk about it. And then I was fully in the mix. Um, Nate talked again. So then I wrote putting down the dog. And from there... Um, Dave reached out and I think he had read like a series of like four or five blogs in a row that were doing really well. And he was like, do you want to go full time? And I, not, it wasn't the right time six years ago. It was definitely the right time now. Like I've been kicking myself for not doing it. So this is like January, right? Yep. The end of January, January okay. 31st. All right. So end of January. And like you said, so the whole fall, summer after July, you get that kick in the ass. You're mm -hmm. doing 35, you're doing 35. Then like out of nowhere, you get a you get a spark plug, or you get a just a jolt from probably I don't even know if that was an offhand comment by her or what. Like you know, I don't it, like regardless that you took exception to, mm -hmm. and like just fucking spins into this whole thing. Which Dude, is I was insane. prepared to ask for Dave in August. I was gonna say, hey, it's my sixth year mark. Can I go from a thousand dollars a month to maybe twelve hundred, twelve fifty? That's that was my plan. Do thirty five for a full year, ask for a two hundred dollar raise. It turned into within a month moving to Chicago, quitting teaching, quitting coaching, and working full time at Barstool. Absolutely absurd turn of events. Mm -hmm. But why? But what was it that you just always would have thought? What if? Like, you, why did that? Because you said before you're like, I went to school for this, mm -hmm. like basketball what changed it's just like five years of it like you felt like you did that already it was a combination of i'd been a basketball coach for eight years we've we've had really good seasons I, we've cut the nets down i've i've enjoyed that and i don't feel like if i stop now that i've cut that short i've done that it's also a hundred percent being a fan of barstool watching barstool seeing all the cool things these guys get to do and being like damn dave offered me that five years ago i turned it down I can always come back and teach and coach. Like if this doesn't work out, I'm going to be able to yeah. teach and coach again. I don't know if I have to wait another six years or if I'll never get a chance again to do it. So as soon as he DM me, I said, yep. Didn't care what the number was. Didn't care where I was going. Yes. I want to try and, and, and with teaching one thing, I love everything about teaching and coaching. The one thing I hate, there's zero incentive. Like you could be the best teacher in the state of Ohio. You're getting paid how old you are. You could be the worst teacher. You're not getting fired. So at least at Barstool now, like I was like, dude, whatever you want to pay, full, cool, sounds good. Um, I'm excited to now try and put my very best foot forward to continue to grow. Like there's incentive to work. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a meritocracy rather than you know a ten year thing, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I I can understand that for sure. Man, that. I mean, it makes sense, you know, five years, you get your feet wet. Like you said, you cut down some nets. It's like, what's next? Like what mm -hmm. kind of, what challenge is next? And it, and th this is no, I came into this school that I was just coaching at. Our freshmen just graduated. We had a great four-year run. I was really close to the seniors. It just, I, I, it felt like 
if I was going to leave, it was the right time at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, it sucked that I left teaching in the middle of the year. Um, Dave let me finish coaching this year, but I couldn't be like, all right, Dave, yeah, give me five more months to finish the state testing. So yeah, I left in the middle of March. Yeah. I think that would have been ill advised too. Cause you kind of had to strike while the iron was hot, mm -hmm. you know, cause. And that's why I continued. Um, I was still part-time until March 11th, but I kind of blogged more, did longer stuff because my stock was at the highest right after that. Yeah. And, and like, you know, that's uh, ebbs and flows and there's, you know, a hundred percent. That, that's just kind of how this place works for sure. Hey, let's pause for a second here because we want to talk about ChevyDriveChicago.com. The auto show may be over, but the best deals at your local Chevy dealer are still going. If it's time for a new car, your local Chevy dealer has something for you. The all-new Equinox, Trax, and Blazer are SUVs you'll want to test drive and drive often, giving everything from style to comfort, safety, and plenty of room there's a Chevy SUV for you. Uh, they're not lying about that. Chevy's got a great fleet. I always say I love that Equinox. I'm, I'm just a fan of the, the captain seats. But I'll tell you too, if you don't, if that's too big for you, that Blazer that Chief brought is sharp. He brought uh, us to work the other day, and it was a nice, comfortable ride. I really enjoyed it. So check out everything. Don't just swing at the first pitch. Go look at all those Equinox tracks: Blazer, Colorado, Silverado. It doesn't matter. All you got to do is head to ChevyDriveChicago.com to learn more about these cars and find your local Chevy dealer today. They really do make it simple, guys. So go do that, ChevyDriveChicago.com. All right, let's get back into it. What was the what was the hardest part about giving up teaching? It's, I think it, it hasn't fully hit me yet, but spring, graduation time, um, getting invited to, like I taught seventh grade. There's no better feeling than going to graduation and watching kids that you had five, six years ago walk across the stage that you, people weren't sure we're going to. Yeah. Um, and graduation time, you get a lot of cards and I, and I'm sure it's high school teachers. I'm sure get a lot of them to be a junior high, middle school teacher and get like a card being like, Hey, through my 12 years of teaching, Mr. Moore, you you had the biggest impact on me. That's like, like, I don't think I'll ever get that here. You get comments that are like, go take, go hilarious blog. Okay, cool. Thank you. That makes me feel really good. There's no better feeling than, Hey, Mr. Moore, this is Harper. Um, you were my seventh grade teacher. However long ago, I'm applying to be a lifeguard. Would you be, would you be my job recommendation? Like, can they call you? And it's like, that's the biggest, no big deal in the world. But if you remember being 16, it's like, yeah. dude, I need references. And for them to think I'm going to call Mr. Moore, that's like a fulfilling job. Oh, for sure. So I, I like, I like this job better than that job. I can tell you that I love sitting in the gambling cave, writing five, six blogs a day, making some TikToks, jumping on here. Dude, the job is sweet, but am I ever again going to get the feeling of, of the rewarding mm -hmm. that, that you felt with, you know, kids like that? Yep. Do you think, do you ever, uh, have you ever sat there? Cause you seem like a pretty philosophical kind of guy. I was an English teacher. Yeah, <laughs> see. Do you ever like uh wonder if you're going to get that itch back? Um, the coaching for sure. I like the competitiveness. That's why I do like that this is like you said is a meritocracy because it's like dude, you got to do something to try and win, to try and compete. Um, teaching wise, I could I don't have the I don't have the itch right now to wake up at 5:30, go to school starting at 7 a.m., teach 7 to 3. Um, but I would say that whether it be running a youth basketball camp or something, dude, I'm going to have to work with kids again at some point. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I've done for 30 years and I love it. So, yeah, cause I was going to say your blog was outstanding. Your last teacher's blog. I, I, I really enjoyed read it top to bottom. And I was like, man, like you said, it's a great job, great place to work. But I, I, I was like, we need this guy teaching the youth. You know, we need people who give a shit like that. Dude, what's crazy is I appreciate that. And a lot of people reached out to me. I wrote that blog in my 35 minute lunch break. It was almost like a, and then when I was like, damn, I wish I would have spent more time on it. Cause I could have put, I could have put a million pictures, a million videos, a million to sum up 10 years of teaching and coaching in one blog that I wrote in 30 minutes, I love the response. And that makes me feel good that people like, like, damn, we're really losing a good teacher. I could have put more time into that. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was very good. You did a great job on Thank it. You. Have you noticed now, uh, and anything that's been a surprise your like first three weeks on the job? 
Um, I would surprise. It's just such a different work environment. Like Dan told me on the first day, and I know that I came in way too hot. Like I kind of planned joking about that and now I've really mellowed out and I'm just like doing my job. But like Jerry worked late into the night, mm -hmm. you know, Jerry after dark. Some people are here, you know, at 730 in the morning. Dan is here doing both, which is crazy. Um, I would just say the different avenues that people choose to be successful has been really eye-opening to me. Like some people have their podcasts, some people, you know, blogs, some people are editors or are video people are freaking awesome. Some people are downstairs, but then like Mincy, who is extremely well-known and extremely successful at what he does, just bounces around from table to table being like, what's up guys? And <laughs> finds his way into things. So it's like, I thought I was going to come in here and be the first here, work really hard, publish the most blogs, work. There's other ways to be successful other than to just do that, if that makes sense. Because are you still uh, required to do 35 a month? Uh, I like this part. Um, do you remember on the unnamed show when I, from my classroom, let it drop that I knew Nate had put a blog on the back end with my full name and a word? You know what I'm talking about? I remember this whole controversy, yes. Okay. He apologized and I 100% accept it. I, I remember seeing that blog during a JV basketball game that I was about to coach in and being like, my whole, and I hadn't been full time yet. My whole career could end from that. Um, and I was really scared. I was really nervous, but I thought he was bluffing. Like no one in their right mind is publishing Tate Moore, head coach of Granville High School girls basketball team is a whatever. Um, so Nate apologized. I totally accepted it. And I said, so the next day I wrote like a, in need of a defamation lawyer. I thought it was a funny blog would never actually do that. Like, I'm so excited to be here. Um, but I said to Nate, I said, I will never bring that up again in a negative light. Like I will always say that I accept your apology. I will always say that I know you were joking. I will always say how kind you were in that moment. Um, if I can just publish my own blogs. Cause that was my gripe. That's another gripe I had to get 35 blogs published. I was writing more than 35. Yeah. They just weren't all going up. Weren't all going up. Dude, yeah. that's a lot of work. So I was like, dude, can I sit here on a college football Saturday, see Ohio state, Marvin Harrison, catch a one handed. Can I just blog that instead of it go writing at 10, going up at noon, mm -hmm. whatever. He was like, dude, you don't understand like all the rules that go into this with, you know, the gambling and the advertisements. Like it's, it's better for you to get your blogs checked. So I said, okay, can I at least then write better blogs instead of writing shit just to get my 35? And he's like, yeah, you want your quota gone? I said, yeah. So I no longer have a quota. There you go. Congratulations. Good trade deal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I, I think you're finding too, like just getting pulled into everything. Are you a lot more busy than you would have imagined? I would bet. Yeah. The first week, I think I only wrote like seven to 10 blogs. Now they were really long. Like I was doing like long form blogs, but I would do, I did the yak. I did the rundown. I did the mid show. I did um, all these different things. It's easy to like, I'll, I'll give, I'll admit it. It is harder to blog out there in the office during the hours of 12 to three than it was in the classroom with 37th graders running around because you are always talking to someone. Someone's filming this. You're getting asked to do this. So it is hard to sit. That's why I, like, I'm not trying to show up early to like be a douchebag. I'm trying to show up early to get some work done in the quiet. Mm -hmm. So then I can enjoy the the circus. Out the rest there. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got you. Damn. All right, man. And, and are you like, you know, how are you enjoying the city so far? I mean, cause you're, you went to Ohio state. Mm -hmm. Obviously we didn't even get into all that. Yeah. Uh, ATO. There we go. Love and respect. There we go. Uh, do you like, so you're like all, are you Cleveland? Are you, what, what are you? Grew up in North, like? grew up in Northeast Ohio in a suburb, not like a huge town, but not like a tractor town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, then went to Ohio State, and then I've been teaching in, in the Columbus area for a decade. Um, but I always lived, like, in a small town, in a city, in, like, a 
whatever, not never like living in the big city. So I, I get this offer to come to Chicago and I'm, I'm I literally looked at it cause I signed a two year deal. I literally looked at it like, uh, I'm going to do my best, but if it doesn't work out, I'm going to enjoy these next two years and say that I was able to do this. So I got, I, I, I looked around at apartments until I could get the top floor. I found I'm living, <laughs> I'm living on floor 42 of a four, 42 floor building. I've got a balcony. Um, I didn't realize that. I, so I'm in like, I'm downtown, downtown. So like a lot of businesses close before, like we get home from work. So it's like, like Chipotle closed at six right next to me. So I'm learning different things about the city. Um, but yeah, this weekend I went to, um, watch soccer at a pub with chief. That was a blast. Um, I'm excited for the final four this weekend. Like I've gone out to different places, tried some deep dish. So like, I'm, I do think I'm, no one can say that I'm not like working hard mm -hmm. but i'm also enjoying life more than i thought i would yeah so you're trying to figure it all out and do you do you miss home at all is that a concern at this point um i had just bought my first house in june oh dude so and i'm That's... renting it out to the school secretary oh, okay i sent a goodbye email to our entire staff totally joking and like one of the li like people thought i was joking when I said like, uh, I will be leaving to work for Barstool Sports. And I sent out that email um, and I said, and by the way, if anyone needs a, uh, a glorious new renovated house on the east side of Newark, um, I'm renting. School secretary, renting it out. Boom. So no, I, I definitely miss Ohio. Dude, I love Ohio. I'm Mr. Ohio. Like mm -hmm. going to the Buckeyes games, going to the Guardians games, watching the Browns, doing all this. I'm going to miss that. But I keep telling myself like, dude, you're you get to live in where, and people say that Chicago summer is like the best thing of all time. It's great. I can't wait to go. Yeah. Can we get some better weather though? You're going to enjoy Dude, that's where everyone uh, is complaining today. When I told everyone during those few nice days we had in like March and February, I was like, yo, don't get too comfortable. Like it's going to flip on us again. And I don't think people took it seriously. Like I've lived here my whole life. This is how it is. Well, I, I, there's nothing I want to do more than go to a Cubs game. I've never been, I'd never been to Chicago until I did the free throw thing. And I want to do Cubs. I want to do those roof top seats i want yeah, to do the, the bleachers seat. i want to yeah. do the white socks but i am not going if it's looking like that out there no don't don't go to uh go to a junior or july game mm -hmm. august so that definitely especially if you don't have you know if you're not a cubs fan so no can i be a cubs fan actual game can you, uh, can you go dude i i am so your guardians guy yeah i mean they beat us we beat world. you in the world series yeah so i'm not even trying to be a cubs fan I love baseball. It's like my favorite like yeah. sport sport. Um, I mean, you should definitely go see the Guardians at uh, White Sox Park. They're sure. coming to the White Sox here. I mean, bunch, they play each other 70 yeah. times. So, um, but yeah, I was debating like, can I throw a Cubs hat on or is that sacrilegious? I mean, it's up to you. That's a personal preference where obviously they're different leagues, but they like I beat us. In yeah. The World Series. I, and they beat, we beat you in the World Series, but I don't, I don't know. I, it would, or can it, I wear a Guardians hat to... Because that's my other option. I'm not wearing a freaking MLB hat and like a pair of jeans. You and should just shirt. wear an umpire hat. Yeah, a black MLB hat. I Call the that's game. Fine. Uh, you should talk to White Sox Dave about that. He would probably want to cut your dick off if he knew that you were uh, going to wear an Indian or a Guardians hat to the Cubs. Can you not yeah. do that? According to Dave? I don't know. He's got like a whole uh, bit about it, and okay. he's like, he's just steadfast about not wearing any team's merchandising from uh, a team that's not playing that day. But what do you? I hear you on that, but what, and you've been in, you grew up in Chicago and you, or Illinois and you've been here your whole life, right? Yeah. Essentially. Uh -huh. What do you do if you move to a city, a big city and like they have all these sports teams, do you cheer for them or do you have to just continue to buy these like cable packages that you can watch your sports from back in yeah, Ohio? Yeah. You got to ride with your team. I, when I'm going you, to, you're 20, no, 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 29, no. right? 30. Yeah. 30. But, okay. And I, dude, I'm not saying I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, but you're like, like, is it okay to like. Hey, this is good. Like it'll be. I I Isn't think the that's, city more fun if Chicago. Yeah. Teams no, listen. Win. I, I think that's fine. I lived in New York for four months for an internship, and like, I guess I had never really thought about that because the Knicks were so bad. Mm -hmm. I guess like the Rangers might have been decent that year, but I was never like fully. Did you go to games? I went to one Knicks game, and I went to one Yankees and one Mets game. Okay. Just to check it out, obviously. Yeah. I just feel like if I'm gonna like go to a handful of baseball games dude i'm not going to not cheer for someone like when the cubs went or hit a home run i'm a high five dude next to me that's where i'm at yeah or just make a bet 
That's, yeah, that's true. That's, that's yeah. true. Just bet on him. Yeah, bet just on bet him. on him. That's all you got to do. You guys just solved it. That's right. Yeah, bet on him, and you'll be good to go responsibly. Um, the w- one thing I did want to go back to as well is about the controversy. Do you do you like coming in being kind of known as like a cyclone like that? Is that a little nerve wracking to you that it's like you're uh, seen as like a guy who's going to ruffle feathers like that? Uh, I don't necessarily want to be th- like I didn't want to come in. And be someone that like you couldn't talk to and like was only looking to like meddle in things. Um, and I think you've gotten to know, like, dude, I say hi to everyone that walks through. I yeah. come up, talk to you. Like, it's not like I'm a mean dude. Mm-hmm. I do like a little bit of the reputation that like I have that in my bag. Um, <laughs> like, like, do you, I don't know if you got how much you guys paid attention, but like, I love that cartoon face cause I used it for six years. And if I tweet, you know, my fingers going down like this with the cartoon face, like someone's going to get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't want, I'm not looking for it. Mm-hmm. Now, are you concerned about the fact that, and of course it's, it's a little different. You're, you're here. You don't, you only see half the company face to face, but if someone ever told you yet, like it's a lot harder to do this when you know the people now, a hundred percent, I think you'll, I've, I learned that the first weekend when Marty and Rico came for, uh, conference tournaments. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, I've written about both of them. Um, which I still intend to like, dude, you can crack jokes with people. And I think they both, Yeah, yeah. but when you sit on a couch with someone for four straight days, both making parlays and betting on the over and everything you realize, dude, they're pretty cool dudes. Like, so, so, so I think, I think everyone in Chicago and then the people that have come here for the streams have realized what type of person I am. I still can write and I still like to, you know, can throw daggers in that way. If, if we want to get into a blog war, we can get into a blog war. But no, my persona is not going to be to just chirp at coworkers. To try to get in fights. Yeah. So it'll be interesting when I meet people from New York, even though I think the only people, like they acted like it was a entire attack on the New York office. I think it was, I wrote a blog about lazy employees. Obviously, Kelly was mentioned. Her response to me fueled the fire more than what I thought it was going to. And then Nate was um, saying I didn't deserve to be paid. Everyone else, I haven't said one word about Frank, Hubs, yeah, you know, these, whoever. these people that are in New York, I don't, don't know. Yeah. Now, do you have a, um, a thought process here? Do you have a, a plan when like you do see these people? <laughs> have uh, you thought about that? Um, No, I thought, I will say this. I thought, at, in the contract negotiations, which I act like that's a big thing. It was not. It was DM like Dave said, do you want to stay in Ohio? And I was like, honestly, dude, I don't like I would like to go to an office because that's where you get in the mix. You tell me. And I blogged my three options. I was under the impression he was going to choose. Um, I thought he was going to choose New York. I thought that was like the most. Yeah, I, 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 it was kind of stunning that. Yeah. Like obviously how it made more sense. You're Midwest and, you know, like Chicago's closer mm-hmm. and like. You cheaper. You would have preferred that for sure, but I just assumed like you kind of made your, uh, you know, your yeah. way yeah. against it, and that's what he would want it because Dave loves controversy. But and then and then I wrote like, dude, if I if it was up to me, I would rank it Chicago. What do I think is gonna happen? New York. And then he said to me, he was just like, "Yep, talk to Dan. He's good with Chicago." So they they turned it from like I thought he was gonna send me somewhere. It turned to I got to choose. Obviously chose Chicago. Um, but then I talked to Dan and he was like, "Dude, you have to go to New York at some point, probably first week, because of all that happened." Um, well, <laughs> just from <laughs> how people acted during the whole feud, Dave didn't feel comfortable with that. Talked to him at the free throw thing, and he was like, "Yeah, you'll go at some point, but it'll be with me." So there hasn't been any more discussions about that. I don't know if it'll happen, but uh, I'm just kind of on ice right now. Yeah, because who knows when that's going to yeah. happen or if it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think you made the right move, just in the respect, and that's no disrespect to New York, just in the respect where, like, if you would have went there, your content would have just became all that would have been my whole yeah. Life. So now it's like you could, you know. But um, are some of them coming for mini golf? Do you know? I'm sure. I'm assuming it'll sure. be my first time meeting a lot of people. Yeah, I'm sure. But uh, no, man. I mean, we could we we got another show to do after this, so I we got to. I'm sorry to cut you short. We could keep going, but was it, was, say, uh, it was quick. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely a quick pot. I could definitely just keep chatting with you, but we'll have more opportunities. Cool. You signed a two year deal. Two year deal. Gotcha. Yep. Good. So. Good. Well, welcome, man. Obviously, you need anything from Chicago people or whatever? Let me know. I heard you're the guy to talk to. 
Let me know. That's what I, everyone told me. I said, coming in and said, Eddie will hook you up. <laughs> I'm excited for Big Ten football season. Yeah. That, I heard Chicago's like the place to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, like obviously, you know how State grad, I, I did not go to a Big Ten school, but it's kind of the melting pot where people come to in their, you know, mm-hmm. 20s after, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And the Buckeyes college. play at Wrigley this year. That'll be good. It's huge. Yeah, that'll be fun. I'm pumped. They so. like fixed it where you don't have to only have one or uh, goalpost which is nice oh you used to have to go the same way well yeah uh, i think it was illinois northwestern played there what was it like i don't know maybe fuck the way time goes maybe it was 10 years ago now Mm -hmm. and they didn't like measure correctly they only had one oh wow goalpost yeah no we're going both ways this year yeah so that's good all right then man um great chopping it up with you Mm -hmm. uh it's been it's been a pleasure having you here and uh yeah we'll we'll do more soon i'm sure Mm -hmm. We'll get you on a draft for sure. Love and respect. Yeah, love and respect. There we go. Uh, All right, everybody. That's it for today. That's it for this week. Uh, We'll see you guys for the draft on Monday.